this is Steve Does, the return of Steve Does. This is a, a show on, it's episode number 17 actually, haven't done a Steve Does in probably a year. Just got back into Steve Does as we're doing these, there's already Steve Says, there's the Russian and the Freak. We lost connection on one. There's the Russian and the Freak. There is the Break in the Cycle, the show with the kids. There's, of course, Steve Says on Personal Development every Tuesday. And here is Steve Does, episode number 17. Just finished a training session. Finished two training sessions, actually. So I'm just here with my jug of water. So I need to drink that on here. This is all about health, fitness, and nutrition. So I hope you don't mind me sipping on some shit and my post-workout recovery drink. Did two hours of training. Started with an hour of the project workout. We do live on Zoom every single week, every Thursday at 2 p.m. Pacific. That's live with all the candidates for all the upcoming classes of the project that they have access to that live training session every single week for all the months leading up until their class. So we just finished that and then an additional hour session on my own afterwards. So I just need my Herbalife and Trulene post-workout shake. And as we're going here, let's make this interactive. Any questions, comments, I have you on like five different screens here in front of me. And this is Steve Does, episode number 17. This is a, a, a live show on health, fitness, training, nutrition, wellness, whatever the hell you want to call it. But this is the peak freak style. This is talking about freak mode, the freak code in the freak freaking mode. That's what it's about. Today, I'm going to share the secrets, the secrets to the basics. I'm going to share my personal types of training routine and nutrition. And if you have any questions, just comment, uh, put them down in the comments or send me it privately on, on the side if you want to. And I'm just going to share my personal training routine that I use on a regular basis, the secrets to it, to uh, the, the strategies and tactics to sh stay in shape all year round, to stay well conditioned, to stay strong, because that, that's the way I like to be in general. And everyone's different, depends on your goals, obviously, but I like to be strong, fast, with endurance, cardio, conditioning, balance, coordination, flexibility, powerful, explosive, light but heavy all at the same fucking time because I want it all. So think about that. That's what we're talking about. This is about peak performance, peak potential, and your peak physique. So we're going to talk about uh, weekly on here on on the on Steve Does. This is basically just going through different things that I do. I get asked all the time questions. I get emails and, and comments and questions on posts here on Instagram, Facebook, and all over LinkedIn, everywhere, freaking Twitter, YouTube, about... What do you think about this? What do you think about that? That's why I decided to get this show back up and running. This is episode 17. And it's it's really just about what you, whatever you're struggling with, with your weight loss or your building muscle or your endurance or your training, just getting results, getting results. And today we're going to talk about how to structure a basic routine, a basic long-term training routine that you can stick to and stay in shape and continue to get results year after year. Like literally, we're talking about long-term because this shit is not... A quick fix. If you're looking for a quick fix, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. What do we got here? I'm just looking at the comments. Watching from Aruba vacation. Yes, Aruba. Nice. Hope you're going to get it in. Hope you're getting training. Hope you're not eating too bad when you're on vacation because you should be always sticking to it. So, all right. Also, do you have an intentional approach to how you train every day? Like, do you know what, you, what your training is going to be every day and, and in the long term? And if you're looking for like meathead workouts or whatever, sure, we do some meathead workouts, but that's not what this is about. This is not really what it's about. This is about being well-rounded, staying conditioned, being hard to kill, being ready for battle, like ready, just fit, ready for the, ready for the invasion. That's what we like to say. Just always freaking ready. If you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game. We talk about it all the time. Also, we're going to talk about how many days a week you should train. How many days a week you should plan for workout. What should your rest recovery look like? How long should workouts be? We're going to mix all that stuff in today. But over the weeks to come and the months to come and the years to come here on Steve Does, it's all about what are the, the common questions that we're getting. Really, this is a, a show for anyone that is, is, is struggling or wants to level up with getting results in your workouts, your nutrition, your energy, your performance, your weight loss program, whatever it is where I'll be sharing my personal unique approach no bullshit in the trenches freak mode approach 
to training, our, our training systems, our educational eating guidelines, nutritional discipline, so that you'll know how to train, you'll know how to eat, you'll know how to build muscle, lose weight, and how to reach your peak performance and your peak physique, achieving real results in the real freaking world, because that's what it's all about. No fluff, no bullshit, just straightforward training, fitness, nutrition, and answering your questions if you have any. As I can see, I'm trying to keep track with all the different different screens here. So listen, when it comes to, to the way that we do this in the freak mode with peak physique is we train different, we eat different, we act different because we are fucking different. We are freaks, we are peak freaks, and it's, it's, it's a, our unique training, our unique nutrition, weight loss strategies, nutritional discipline, and educational eating is the way we talk about it. So if you have questions, put them down there in the comments below. Let's get rolling. So the number one secret, I'm going to share, and I'm going to jump right off the bat and share the number one fucking secret to get you, and, and this is going to be, poof, it's going to be fucking mind-blowing for you. The number one secret that I'm going to share with you to get in shape and to stay in shape, because I get asked this question all the time, like, how, and to me, it, they always say that the, the, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Well, there is such thing as a stupid question. There's such thing as a stupid question as a stupid fucking question. There is such thing as a, 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 a stupid question. And a stupid question is a stupid question. A stupid question is also a question of the answer to it. You're just filling in and wasting fucking people's time and air and energy and, and brain power on if you already know the fucking answer. So I get asked this question and several times. It's fucking mind-blowing. And I get asked, how many months of the year do you try to stay in shape? Now just think about how that sounds. How many months of the year? Motherfucker, 12 months of the year. That's how many months of the year. Like, think about it. Like, I'm going to intentionally... Anyone that says uh, they're in a bulking phase, that's AKA I decide to be lazy, a uh, lazy fat ass for like a month or two. A bulking phase. Bull no, uh, bullshit. Bullshit. All right? Maybe you're packing on some muscle, but say, whenever someone's used that, oh, I'm in a bulking. I'm bulking. That's like code word, AKA I'm deciding to be freaking uh, uh, fat and lazy for a month or two months or three months, a whole fucking who knows how long. Some people's bulking phase has lasted a fucking decade. Time to start, stop bulking, bro. Time to stop fucking bulking. All right. So, and that's coming for me. Shit, I couldn't bulk if I fucking tried. Anyway, so this, this is the number one secret to staying in shape all year round. And it's going to be crazy. It's going to be mind-blowing. There's going to be some deep scientific shit. So get out your papers and pens. Get out your fucking recorders. It's going to be scientific shit. I'm going to give you one word. That's going to be my secret to staying in shape, to staying strong enough to hang with the strong guys, fast enough to hang with the fast guys, conditioned enough to hang with the conditioned guys, athletic enough to hang in most sports that you don't just absolutely completely suck in and have zero skill in, but able to run fast, but able to run long, able to lift for endurance, but able to lift for a decent amount of strength and power, able to be athletic, able to have still good enough flexibility, Good enough balance, good enough coordination, good enough durability, good enough wind, speed, bounce in your fucking step. And at the same time, good enough overall health, not too fucked up or broken down. The number one secret to, to achieving all that, maintaining all that, improving all that, it comes down to one fucking word. And I know we're building up for this. We're building up for this. And you're sitting on the edge of your motherfucking seat. Like, what's it going to be? And it's going to be mind-blowing to you. And it's probably going to be fucking disappointing to you. The number one word to stay fit, to stay lean and ripped and athletic and strong and have fucking energy all day, every day. Seven days a week. Every fucking, bring in the fucking fire every second of every second. The number one word to maintain that shit. You know what it is? Boring. Boring. Yeah, fucking poof, mind-blowing, right? It's boring. If you saw my training routine, except for suffering Saturdays and, and you know, the crazy challenges we do. But if you saw my general training routine, and I'm going to go over it, the, the, the template of it. I'm out here trying in the gym because this is a fitness and health show. I'm getting fucking chomped up by these California fucking mosquitoes. Jesus. If you, and plus just finished working out, it's all sweaty. Did you see, did you ever see, 
Holmes and Watson, the movie. They wanted the, the deadly Moscato. They call it the Moscato. If you haven't seen Holmes and Watson, you're missing out. That is a funny-ass movie. We watch it all the time. They have the mosquito. They needed to catch a mosquito, so he tells the guy to do the Irish jig so he can break a sweat when you sweat. So I just finished working out. So the mosquitoes are chomping me like I just did the fucking Irish jig. The Moscatoes. Anyway, where were we? We get sidetracked very easily. Anyway, boring, boring, boring. If you saw my training routine, if you saw my lifting routine, if you saw my cardio routine, if you saw my eating, my nutrition, like the my fitness pal routine, if you saw that, so again, my training, my strength, my workouts overall, the training overall routine, the template of the routine, I'm gonna break that down for you. If you saw that, and you saw my, the strength workouts and the cardio workouts, just the basic ones, and the nutrition on a daily basis, you'd realize that the key word to staying in shape, to staying fit, staying on top of your A game all year round, to never fall off, the number one word you need to know to maintain that is boring. Fucking boring. But you know what? I'd rather be boring and healthy and fit and energetic and lean and ripped and muscular and feeling fucking good and living a fucking good life than be not boring and be fat and unhealthy and, and miserable and depressed and whatever else. And that goes in, this goes for business too. I know it's just a fitness show and I'm actually going to be starting Steve Knows on Mondays, which is going to be all about business, sales and marketing and growing and scaling businesses. That's going to be Steve Knows, but it's the same thing for business. It's boring. You, you, that's a key word. You got to be fucking boring. That's how you do it. It's boring. I know we, we ran our gyms in New York on, on variety and making it not boring because that's what people need to, to psychologically be motivated to show up every day. But once you can get over the fact that shit, is go- shit on paper is going to be boring, you'll learn how to make the shit fun. The, the results will be fun. The way you feel all year round will be fun. When you take off your motherfucking shirt at the beach, you'll be glad that you were a boring motherfucker. That's the way you got to think about it. Of course, boring means also, it's it's another word really for just consistency, over time is what you need to do. That's what's going to keep you well balanced. We're talking seven days a week. Freaking boring. And the workouts, my lifting routine, the nutrition, the foods I'm eating. Now, the workout routine, okay, there's a boot camp class in there mixed in and a boxing class usually each week. And then on Saturdays, there's a suffering Saturday. Those are going to be some usually crazy, wild, uh, off-the-wall stuff or not as boring. But let's go through the template. Let's go through the template of the week. So, well, the next question is how many days a week should I work out before we go to the template? Because then you'll see how many days when I go through the template. These fucking mosquitoes are chomping me up here. The sweaty Irish jig. So, work out. How many days a week? You know what? I have a theory on working out. And it's you should plan... To, to, to train, plan for exercise or activity, however you want to word it, every fucking day, seven days a week. You'll have your swing days that are active recovery days that if you need it to, it's either an active recovery or you turn it into a complete rest day if needed, if you earned it, if absolutely needed, and your body will tell you if you need it. Now, don't be the one that misses your workouts three or four days in a row, gets a workout in for a day, and then your next day is a, a scheduled rest day. And you take the motherfucking rest day. If you just missed three or four days that were scheduled workout days and you were too fucking busy for that, how are you not too busy for your rest day? There's no such thing as a rest day, especially when you just missed days before that. Motherfuckers will be disciplined on their rest days. They will never miss a rest day, but they won't be as disciplined on their training days. It's it's fucking mind-blowing to me. That's why I don't schedule rest days. Those get decided on the fly as needed. So I will schedule for seven days a week of training. Now, Sunday is like an active recovery day. Active recovery might mean running around and playing in the park for like two, three hours. This Sunday, it was a three hour and five minute bike ride, 30 something miles bike ride. That's an active recovery day. That's not even a training day. So when you say, if you think you worked out, like to me, a bike ride, I don't care how long it is. It's not a workout. That's an, that's an additional activity. I'll do a workout and then go for a 30 mile bike ride, typically. So. An active recovery day, if it's just a 30-mile bike ride, that was an active recovery day. That was the seventh day of the week. You know, when this whole corona bullshit started, Tyson and I were sitting there one day, and we started talking about rest and recovery because of a similar situation to this. People talking about rest days and recovery days. Someone asked a question on one of 
our free boxing live videos that we were doing. And the question was about recovery days and days off and how many days off we take. And we sat there live on video and we started thinking, and this was almost a year, close to a year into Corona, like nine, 10 months into Corona, like the shutdowns. This is a little while back. We sat there and we're thinking about live on camera during the free box workout. We're like, holy shit. We have not taken a rest day. We literally were going seven days a week. And I'm not talking about just active recovery. We were fucking training. Sometimes on Sundays, we'll train. Seven days a week for like nine and a half fucking months, not missing a day. Feeling better than ever. Best shape, more healthy, fucking feeling great. Now, do you need to work recovery into your routine? Fuck yeah. Do you need to work recovery into your days? Fuck yeah. But if you're planning for an active recovery day, a Sunday, and you're feeling fucking good, Add in part of a workout to it. If you're not feeling great and you feel like your body's breaking down and you need the fucking break, you know what? You turn it into a complete rest day or a lighter active recovery day. Because that's after six hard motherfucking days. We're talking about training. I'm not talking about exercise or Pilates or any of that. That's all great. We're talking about motherfucking training. Like going hard. Like on your strength days, your lifting days. Although I say it's boring. That's why I say it's boring on paper. When I tell you, you're going to be like, wow, that's fucking boring. I would never be able to do that. Well, do you want results? Do you want to be able to take your, your shirt off at the beach and get made, up, made fun of? Because you want to get made fun of at the beach because you're ripped? Like happens nowadays, you want to get made fun of at the beach because you're fucking fat. Your choice. Your decision. And a lot of what that takes is to be boring. Boring and everything. Like, people say, oh, you got to live a little bit. You got to drink a little bit. You got to eat some shit. How is living, drinking a bunch of fucking alcohol, putting a bunch of poison in my body? How is that living a little? How is eating shit? A bunch of tacos and, and fucking whatever else. How's that living a little? It's actually how you're going to die a lot of it. Forget about living a little bit. You're going to die a lot of it eating that shit. So boring is the key word. So the, the routine, seven days a week, training seven days a week, maybe an active recovery day. Maybe not. Maybe you're going to train hard that day because you're feeling fucking good. As long as you're not overtraining, we're talking about still going smart. Not saying being dumb, doing the same thing every day. So here's how my basic routine, I'm going to break it down for you. My boring ass basic routine for seven days. Monday, and with my strength, I'll get three days of, of main strength in a week, and that's total body every time. I don't do split routines because I want to get it in. I, I told you, I want to be well-rounded. I want to be fit. I want all body parts. I want abs all year round. I'm going to be in the middle of the fucking winter with abs. That's me. So this is called Steve Does. You take what works for you, and you disregard what doesn't. But I guarantee you, a lot of you can really use this stuff because most people are trying to lift, they're living, lifting, lifting like a bodybuilder or, or eating like a bodybuilder. And the routine is semi bodybuilder ish, but you're not having the bodybuilder lifestyle, bodybuilder discipline, bodybuilder sleep and recovery. You're not having the bodybuilder intensity, but your routine on paper is a bodybuilder routine. Your diet sure as fuck is in a bulking phase or a bodybuilder some reason, you don't look like a motherfucking bodybuilder. Keep it boring. Keep it fucking boring. So my routine, Monday. And again, my three strength, main, main three strength days are all total body. And we'll break, and, and the way it breaks down, we could be here all day talking about that. We'll get into that in future episodes. But I'm just going to talk about how the week looks. So Monday is total body strength using machines. So that's in a commercial gym using machines, total body strength, using machines. We call that Meathead Monday, Muscle Building Monday. Tuesday is Torturing Tuesday. That's what we're doing, usually a boot camp class. A lot of times we record it live right here on Instagram, Facebook, is a high intensity cardio boot camp type style, usually mostly body weight, maybe some equipment, medicine balls or something, but usually a lot of body weight. Torturing Tuesday, Torture Tuesday. Cardio boot camp type session. Sometimes mixing some kettlebells. If you're feeling good from the day before strength, I'll mix in some shoulders, buys, and tries, light, or kettlebells, cleans, and presses, stuff like that. But with, with circuits and lighter to medium weight, fast pace, cardio effect, dripping sweat. Now listen, every strength workout, you should be dripping motherfucking sweat. If you're not dripping sweat, you're not training. You're bullshitting, you're half assing. If you got a towel thrown over your shoulder and a jug of water, and you're just strolling around, sitting around, chit chatting, you ain't a bodybuilder, first of all. If you ain't sweating, you ain't fucking training. You're bullshit. That's an active recovery day. I don't care what you're lifting at the gym. If you're not sweating, 
it's an active recovery day. It's not even training. So that's that. So Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday is the torturing Tuesday. Wednesday, Wednesday is weightlifting Wednesday. It's total body with free weights, barbells and dumbbells and kettlebells, strength. So it's total body strength with free weights. That's weightlifting Wednesday. Thursday, we call it Thunder Thursday. Thunder Thursday usually has two sessions back to back. It's a project workout, which is like a, a boot camp style cardio type workout, usually body weight, sometimes mixing in some dumbbells and kettlebells, whatever, similar to, similar to the Tuesday, and followed by a boxing, kickboxing, cardio workout, sometimes followed by extra biking or whatever, row machine, stuff like that. Friday. Friday, we call it Freedom Friday because it's kind of a freestyle, but it's also freedom from equipment, freedom from machines, freedom from weights. It's all body weight strength. We're talking about push-ups, pull-ups, dips, TRX. We're talking about lunges, squats, step-ups, hip raises, abs, all body weight. We call it Freedom Friday because it's free from equipment. It's also freestyling. It's a different type of game. We play different games with those body weight exercises every freaking week. Saturday is Suffering Saturday. That's a day where it's just high intensity, freaking cardio, whether it's pushing sleds up hills, doing sprints up hills, holding, holding heavy sandbags going up hills, heavy farmer's walks, things like that. Band resisted runs, high intensity, explosiveness, intervals, suffering Saturday. And we, we, we fucking kill it. It's an hour and a half, two hours. We've had some, some of you've joined us here for that. It's fucking crazy and intense. It's like the kind of workout that some people plan to do once or twice a year. We do every motherfucking Saturday. Suffering Saturday. And then seven, Sunday is called Seventh Day Sunday. Because we're training seven days a fucking week. Seventh Day Sunday is a swing day. Usually it's going to be an active recovery day. Feeling good. You have some uh, event coming up in peak training season. It's going to add in some uh, additional extra training. Might be active recovery. Again, yes, this, this week was a three and a half, th- a three, a three hour and five minute bike ride, 30 something miles for active recovery. That ain't a fucking workout. It's not a workout. It's not training. It's cruising, cruising on a bike, even with some hills and this and that. So that's the seven day. And that's, yeah, it's boring as fuck. It's basically total body lifting Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You think about it, cardio Tuesday and Thursday, Ex- crazy suffering Saturday. And seventh day Sunday is just mixing it up. It's a swing. It's as you uh, active recovery, maybe some training. If you've gone several weeks in a row where you just had a bunch of active recovery days that were a little harder than normal, and it's like you know what, you know your body, you know the way you're feeling, the way you need. You want to get a good, a, a crazy Monday lifting meathead Monday. You turn Sunday into a rest, and that's a swing day. That gets like decided Saturday, maybe Friday. If you're planning in advance, and you didn't, then guess what? If you plan on Friday for a rest day on Sunday, that Friday body weight workout better be fucking insane. And suffering Saturday better be like near a death ex- fucking experience. If you're planning for a day off, better earn that motherfucker. If you're planning for that day off, you have to earn it. You have to earn it. So that's that on the seven days, seven days of the week. Just checking these messages here. All right, so. I plan for seven days a week. I don't plan for a rest day. And that same goes for nutrition. Same goes for nutrition. I don't plan for a cheat day. A cheat day? And and I've seen it on people's fucking calendars. A cheat day. Like, you put it on your calendar or cheat meal and actually type in and put on your calendar the words cheat meal or cheat day. It's fucking idiotic. You're planning... To break your discipline. You're planning to go backwards. You're planning to dig yourself in a motherfucking hole. And it's stupid. It's freaking stupid. A cheat day. Or a cheat meal. Crazy. Now, can you ever eat a piece of pizza? Yeah, if you earn that shit. Just like you earn your rest days. You fucking earn shit. You earn shit. Just like in the business. I was talking about this in in a... A coaching session with a a one-on-one coaching client about business. How not not doing work late at night when you're with your family. 
Once in a while, you might need to do a half hour, make a half hour phone call on something real important when it's normally family time. If you communicate that ahead of time, sure, you can go do that. But you earn the right to do that. You have to earn the right to do that. If you're just all the time on your computer and your phone after work hours and you're just un, uh, totally out there and not being present during your family time all the time, you're just a douchebag. Like, if you, you have to earn the right to be able to make a phone call on family time. If it's communicated ahead of time, it doesn't happen all the time. It's like, fuck it, you can go do that. You're fucking awesome. You're always here with us. You're here with us hours a day, every single night. Once in a while, you got to go make a phone call during family time. Fuck yeah. Fist bump, go do it. I'll see you afterwards. Go do what you got to do. Like, you got to earn that shit. You have to earn the right for a rest day. You have to earn the right for a, a, an unhealthy food that you eat consciously knowing what you're doing and what you're putting into your body because you, you, you are doing educational eating. You constantly know you're breaking your nutritional discipline. It's going against your goals. You know what it's going to be doing to your body, what it's going to take to get that out of your body. The one minute it takes to wolf down that the food inside the fucking pie hole is going to take an hour and a half, two hours on a treadmill to get it out. And you understand that, but you earned it. You earned it. You're not just planning a cheat day to plan a cheat day. You're not planning a rest day just to plan a rest day. Because people would be disciplined with their cheat days. They'll never miss a fucking cheat day or rest day. But they'll miss the, all the other fucking days of the month that are supposed to be hard-ass training and nutritional discipline. Those days you're allowed to slip up on. The motherfuckers will be disciplined as hell on cheat day and rest day. And it's fucking stupid. Just the word cheat. Adding cheat into your schedule. Think about it. Think about that. Mixed into that routine and that seven-day-a-week routine, some days can be doubled up. Depending on your energy, depending on your schedule, you should mix in some kind of self-defense, some kind of outdoor training, whether it's boxing, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu classes, that should be somewhere factored in. And for the most part, I wouldn't, as much as jiu-jitsu is a crazy workout, like get your training session in the morning, go to jiu-jitsu at night, double it up, figure it out, sleep enough, hydrate enough. If your nutrition is enough, if you need to take some supplements and extra vitamins or something to, to, to boost your immune system, do what you got to do. But for the most part, once in a while, you can call jujitsu. I mean, maybe on a, a recovery, a, a seventh day Sunday or the seventh day of the week, you can call jujitsu your training session. And I know it's hard as hell work shit. There's been times when jujitsu is much harder than any fucking work I ever did. But I would call that an extra activity. But you should mix in some kind of fight training, some kind of self-defense, some kind of additional activity like that into your routine. That's in addition to your training to well round, make it well-rounded. And cardio, running, where does that fit in? Well, that fits in on those lifting days or on those Tuesdays, any of those days you can mix in. It all depends on how I feel. This is what Steve does. This is what I do. And you take the pieces that work for you. You adapt them into your lifestyle, your personality, your fucking goals. And I guarantee you'll get in the best fucking shape of your life. So listen to this simple, boring shit. So running, I'll, I'll usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll run. And it'll be after I'm done lifting. My goal is not to be a fucking marathon runner. My goal is to be well-rounded. So after, depending on lifting, how much legs were done in that day, or whatever, time-wise, energy-wise, how long the lifting session was, depending on the lifting work I was, it'll be either a one-mile run for time, a three-mile run for time. Sometimes it'll be a 30-minute run for distance. Sometimes a 10-minute run for distance, how much time do I get done in 10 minutes? Sometimes it, if just feeling good, it'll be a steady state run for 60 minutes. And that's what I'm, that's max. That's 60 minutes is like max. Like we're talking about being well-rounded. You start going overboard in one area, you start getting too much attention in one area, too much time in one area, it's gonna take away and detract from other areas. I wanna be a well-rounded motherfucker. I wanna be hard to motherfucking kill. That's what I wanna do. I want to be fucking ready to, to go at all times. If you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game, bring motherfucking fire every second of every second. That's what I want to be prepared for. So that's really the breakdown of it. It's so simple. It's so boring. It's so simple that it takes so much fucking discipline. It's so boring that it takes massive amounts of mental and physical and emotional discipline to stick to. Because it's not all that crazy wild variety. I don't need it. 
and you don't need a different workout every day. See, the Tuesdays, the Thursdays, the suffering Saturdays, that gives all the fun, extra additional functional stuff. And even though Monday, Wednesday, I said total body, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, total body strength, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, cardio, basically Tuesday, Thursday, and just massive craziness on Saturday, Sunday, swing day, recovery day, hike, bike, whatever. So that Monday, Wednesday, th- Monday, Wednesday, Friday, total body strength days, there's so many variables, so many ways. We're going to, we'll, we'll do a whole separate show on just the different types of ways you could break down routine and structure those three days. I just want to give the template of the week, the weekly breakdown to show you how fucking simple it can be. And guess what? I don't miss these workouts for anything in the fucking world. Now, I know some people work out first thing in the morning. That's not for me. I work out, I wake up first thing in the morning and I do my morning routine for about an hour. I do about two to three hours of kill time. That's me doing the most important priorities of work for the day. So that now I'm set, I'm focused, intentional for the day. I got the most important priorities done for the day. Now when I go to the workout, nothing can invade my mental fucking space. I will not be distracted. I won't be messing with the phone. I don't have to worry about checking emails or texts because I already killed it. I did my kill time for two to three hours. Because I cannot have distractions. I don't want distractions. The workouts. The second uh, an event comes up or something, or I have to travel, the first thing to talk about is, where am I going to put the workout in? It is non-negotiable. There's no such thing as, oh, I didn't get to work my workouts in this week. Or, oh, I missed two days. No such fucking thing. That's bullshit. It's excuses. There's people far busier than all of us combined that still find time to get the workouts in every day. I'm busy as shit. I will not miss my workouts. I'll put two hours on the schedule seven days a motherfucking week and that's with a 30 minute kind of prep time before it to make sure I have my pre post workouts all everything I need it's all about being boring I'm a boring motherfucker and I don't care I'm a freak motherfucker but I'm a boring motherfucker when it comes to this stuff and the same thing with the nutrition we'll go into that in other episodes we'll also go into breaking down of all right those total body strength days how do you break those down how are the different ways to take the boring and rearrange it so there is still variety because I'm, I'm overemphasizing the boring, but those workouts are still very different every time. You could literally have the same six exercises and do them for a year every Monday and do a different workout and a different routine almost every day, every week for the year. If you break it down the right way, we're going to go over all that, all the different ways to do it on future episodes. Anyway, I got to get rolling. This has been Steve Does, episode number 17. If you have any questions, comments, need any help with your fitness, your nutrition, your mindset, your body, your business, whatever it is, send out a message. Let's talk about some one-on-one coaching. There's a new segment to the one-on-one Operate to Dominate coaching program. It's an online only. It's, it doesn't, it's, it's all online, but it's still one-on-one. It's not even any committing to any actual calls. That's the, the higher end one-on-one OTD is with weekly coaching calls. Uh, uh, live, in person, or online. There's also another tier of the training that is just online only to help to get you locked in to have one-on-one attention from a coach on a lower level. If you want information or need help with any of that stuff, send me a message, send me a private message. Let's talk about it and help you operate to dominate in your mind, your body, and your business. This is Steve Does talking all about the body, the wellness, the health, the nutrition, the fitness, the strength, the cardio, getting your shit together in your body, in your muscles, and in your health. All right, I gotta get rolling. In case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.